And, Your Honor, before we get started, I would note that Ms. Williams is a victim in this matter. Very well. Uh, I was made aware of that. I don't believe the exclusionary rule would apply in this case, so I don't need to inquire as to whether or not any of this trial has been observed by this particular witness. So with that in mind, I'll just advise Ms. Williams, if you would please make audible responses, verbal responses to any question and avoid talking at the same time as anyone questioning you. That will help us keep a clear record. And with that, Ms. Blake, you can inquire on direct. Thank you, Your Honor. Will you please state your name and spell your last name? Samantha Gwilliam, G-W-I-L-L-I-A-M. Are you related to Tammy Daybell? Yes, I am. She's my sister. Do you recall being contacted by law enforcement about a pet cemetery on Tammy and Chad Daybell's property in Idaho? Yes. Were you aware if Tammy had a pet cemetery? Yes, I knew she had one. We had seen it when we had gone up to visit. And I would ask that the witness be shown States Exhibit 23A. Um, I have three copies, so one for the court counsel, and then if we can have the witness shown one. And when you talk about a pet cemetery, do you know where it was located on the property? Yes, it was on their property to the side of the red barn. Uh, they had a fire pit that we did have marshmallow roasts at. And there was a fence with a little dog statue next to it. Uh, my niece's uh, dog was buried there, and that's why they put the dog statue on top of it. And that photo that you've been shown, does that appear to be an accurate depiction of the property as you knew it? Yes. And, Your Honor, I would ask for the admission of State's Exhibit 23A. I'm not sure that it was previously admitted. Another witness may have used it. Any objection? No objection. I, I don't believe it was previously admitted, so 23A is now admitted. And if I could um, have permission to publish that to the jury? Yes. And I think there may be a pointer up there. There is. Can you indicate where you knew the pet cemetery to be located? Right here in this little fence, you can see the little dog statue right at the base. This is the fire pit. And how did you know, or I guess you've indicated that, was it common for Tammy to have a pet cemetery? Yes, um, we all grew up with pets and they were like our family, so when they pass away, we always buried them on our properties. And that property in particular was, did you know, do you know whether that property is 202, 202 North, 1900 East in Fremont County, Idaho? Correct. Did Tammy love animals? She did. Do you know if she loved them her whole life? Uh, yeah, we always had pets, uh, guinea pigs. She had ducks, um, like the whole gamut. We had all of them. Did animals seem to love Tammy? Yeah. She was a person that was, you know, they were just drawn to her, and she loved taking care of them. Was that the same way with people? Yeah. She was a little bit of an introvert, but she loved people and loved taking care of them. She loved her grandkids. And, Your Honor, I'm going to ask that uh, the witness be shown State's Exhibit 298. I believe defense counsel has already been provided a copy. That's okay. Do you recognize that photo? Yes, I do. And who is that? It's my sister. And, Your Honor, I'd move for the admission of Exhibit 298. Any objection? Can I ask a question? Yes, go ahead, Mr. Archibald. When was this picture taken, do you know? It was taken at uh, the wedding of one of her children. Do you know about what year this picture was taken? Um... Hold on just a second. 
Um, was in within the year or two of her passing. Uh, maybe 2017. Yeah, or? probably 2017. I can't remember. All of her children got married quickly, you know, the older kids within a year of each other. And so um, within the same year. So it was all, you know, within the year or two of her passing because she just started having grandchildren. With that foundation, Your Honor, I don't have any objection to the, the exhibit. All right. Could you? Okay. Exhibit 298 is admitted. Thank you. And may I publish it for the jury? Yes. How many children are in your family? Uh, there's five of us kids. Where did Tammy fit in that line? She was the second oldest. And how many brothers? We have three brothers. And you and Tammy were the only girls? Yeah, we were the only sisters. Were you close growing up? Yes, we were only four years apart, and so we were far enough apart we didn't fight and close enough together that we got along really well. <laughs> and did you maintain that closeness as you entered into adulthood? Uh, yes, we uh, talked every day and saw each other every day, and we did um, everything together with our children. And do you recall when Tammy started dating Chad Daybell? Yeah, I do. Did you know him from before? Uh, yes, his family lives in our hometown, and so I went to school with his brothers. Um, he was older than me. He was the same age as my oldest brother, so he was not one that I hung around with, but I knew him. Did you like Chad when she started dating him? Yeah, he was a really nice guy. Did you feel like he treated Tammy well? Yeah, he did. And then they ultimately ended up married? Yeah. And throughout their marriage, did you feel, did you maintain contact with Chad and Tammy? Yes, we were very close. Was Chad, in fact, friends with your husband? Yes. Prior to Tammy moving to Idaho, how close did she live to you? We were two blocks away from each other. How often did you see her? Every day. Do you know how many kids Tammy and Chad have together? Yeah, five. And you mentioned earlier Tammy's also a grandmother? Yes. Did Tammy want to move to Idaho? Um, at first, no. Uh, she doesn't like change. And all of her family was there. So, uh, in in Springville, so it was uh, not something she wanted to do at first. Do you know whose idea it was for them to move? It was Chad's. Did Tammy work prior to moving to Idaho? Yes, she did. What did she do for work? Um, at the time that they moved, she was the special ed secretary at the high school. And previous to that, she worked at the elementary school as a computer teacher. Was she good with computers? Oh, she was amazing with them. She was the go-to person? She was the go-to person if any of us had a question about something that she could answer it, and she would pick a, up any new software and could figure it out. Uh, she was self-taught and was very smart. And the two jobs you mentioned, she worked closely with children? Yes, she did. When they first got married, do you know what Chad did for work? Um, he was working for the Springville City Cemetery. Um, for the parks department, he was uh, part of the cemetery upkeep crew. They helped prepare um, all the graves, and they took care of the cemetery, you know, upkeep. Was he also involved in ever digging graves that you know of? Uh, yeah, that was part of their job, is that they would dig all the graves that came through for any of the burials at the cemetery. Eventually, um, he came back and was the sexton, at that cemetery, at that Springville, uh, it was at the Evergreen Cemetery in Springville, and then eventually he was a sexton at the Spanish Fork Cemetery. How did you find out about your sister's passing? Chad called me the morning that she passed away. Do you recall what he told you? Um, he told me that she had been really sick, and that. Um, She'd been coughing all night, and um, 
She had gotten up with a coughing fit around midnight, 1 o'clock, and had gone back to sleep. And he was awakened by her that morning when she rolled out of bed dead. Did that make any sense to you? No, because I had just seen her two weeks previous to that, and she hadn't been that, she wasn't that sick at all. She was very healthy. Did she indicate to you any activities that she was participating in? <laughs> yeah, uh, she was in a clogging class, and she was showing us um, some of her clogging moves, but she was also preparing to run um, a you know, smaller race in their town. So she was trying to stay fit uh, and healthy. And how old was she? She wasn't 50 yet. We were going to get ready to celebrate her 50th birthday. When she came to visit in October, was that a normal visit? No, it was out of the blue. Did anyone come with her? No, she came by herself, and that was unusual because Tammy didn't like to travel alone. Did she tell you why she came down to visit? Um, Chad told her that she needed to come visit her family. Was she able to see all of the siblings? Um, no, it was me and my mom and dad. Did Tammy ever indicate to you that she had suspicion that Chad was having an affair? No, she never said anything about it. I don't. If she did have any inkling, I think he probably brushed it away. Did you notice any change in Chad and Tammy's relationship? Uh, yes, they stayed with us um, the first week in June of 2019, and. Um, it, something seemed off. Um, they were very awkward at our house, and I and Chad wouldn't converse with my husband um, like they normally do. It just seemed really strange, and we weren't sure what was going on. Were there any other ins instances where things seemed a little off? Yes, in my birthday in July, um, Tammy showed up at my front door to give me my birthday present. Um, I didn't even know they were in town, and he stayed in the car the whole time with it running. So she literally stood in my house for five minutes to talk, and then they just left, and he didn't even bother to come in and say anything. It was really weird. And that was of 2019? Yes. Had you and Chad had any kind of a falling out? No. And, Your Honor, I, I'm noticing the time, so... All right. Well, I appreciate that, Ms. Blake. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we need to break for the day so we can continue with the testimony of this witness tomorrow. Thank you, Your Honor. The state will recall Samantha William to okay. the stand. <coughs> uh, she can just take the stand without being resworn. Thank you. And, Your Honor, I was going to ask if I could be handed State's Exhibit 298. All right. It was previously admitted, and I would ask permission to publish it to the jury again. You may. I'll just remind uh, the witness, Ms. William, you are still under oath for purposes of your testimony today. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. William, yesterday we were talking about your sister, Tammy. And this is, in fact, a photo of Tammy, correct? Yes, it is. And I just want to remind the jury, um, you and Tammy are the only two girls in your family. Correct. And prior to her moving to Idaho, you two lived very close. Yes. And you saw each other daily. Every day. We talked a little bit about what Tammy was doing right before she moved up to Idaho as far as employment. Do you know when she moved to Idaho if she was employed? Um, they moved at the end of the school year, so it was like June, right after school got out. Did she end up finding employment later? Uh, they, they did that uh, next school year. She found employment at another school. So she continued to work in the school system? Yes, she loved uh, working with students. Do you know, did she also continue to work with computers? Yes. Um, in fact, uh, she helped one of the schools she was at get a whole new computer lab because uh, they didn't have the equipment that they needed. And um, 
you know, it was a big deal. So. And I, I know we talked about how you found out about her passing. Yes. And we talked a little bit about her coming to visit in October. Yes. And you said on that visit, she seemed healthy to you? Uh, yes, she did. Uh, Tammy had been sick a few years prior, uh, to, you know, to this happening where she'd had a bout of depression. Um, and, you know, as we do with any family, I always do visual checks on, you know, your loved ones. Uh, when you see them later to see how, how are you doing? You look at them and see, and Tammy looked very healthy and was doing very well. So I, you know, it was, it was just one of those visual things that you do when you see your loved ones and she did not look sick at all. And when she'd been sick before, had she talked to you about it? Um, yes. And on this visit, did she indicate anything about not feeling well? No. And I think you said it was actually the contrary. She was telling you about different activities. Yeah, different she activities. In. She just had a wrist issue, like her wrist was bothering her. That was the only thing that she brought up. And you found out the morning of her death. Yes. And was that October 19th of 2019? Yes, it was. When was her funeral? It was the following Tuesday. It was really quick. And... Did that seem odd to you how quick the funeral was? Yes, it did. Did you have any discussions with Chad about that? Yes, we. I asked him uh, on a phone call of why we were, you know, doing things so quickly, and he told me that that he thought that's what Tammy would have wanted, was to not have all the fuss. Uh, I also asked him why he was burying her in Springville instead of Rexburg. Uh, because his, her, their kids are in Rexburg. He is in Rexburg. I mean, it's his spouse. I'm, you know, I'm a sister. We're close. I like having her down there with me, but I'm not her, you know, her husband or the, or their mom. And he said that he thought that it would be better if she was down there because it was cold in Rexburg and under ice and snow all year and they wouldn't get to visit her as much. Were some family members unable to attend because the funeral was so quick? Yes. Uh, several of his side of the family and some other of our family were unable to to come because they were out of state or out of the country. <laughs> Did that include a son of Chad and Tammy's? Yes. Their son was on a mission in Africa. And we'd also talked about... Uh, the summer prior to Tammy's passing, that you'd noticed a difference in Chad. Correct. He seemed more distant and less wanting to talk to us about things, and we just didn't know if it was because they were living farther away or he just, we didn't know what was going on. It was really different. At some point, did you learn that Chad had been remarried? Uh, yes, we learned uh, it was actually uh, one, th one month to the day of her burial is when I found out about it. Did you later learn when he had actually gotten married? Uh, yeah, because I told my husband to find out because Chad was still speaking, you know, he was talking to my husband at that point, and I said, you find out when he actually got married because I feel like that's very quick, even for somebody who's grieving. I'm like, there's... You don't get married four weeks after you just buried your wife of almost 30 years. You just don't do that. And we found out it had only been two weeks after she had been buried, and we were devastated. At some point, did Chad indicate or did you learn the name of his new wife? Yeah, he told us her name was Lori Ryan and that her previous husband had a heart attack and so she had been grieving a spouse as well and that's why they connected was that they were both grieving the passing of spouses and did you end up learning another name associated with Lori Ryan I did I 
as any good sister did, I went to the internet to go see who this woman was. And the. And I'll object, Your Honor, to anything quoted from the internet. And, Your Honor, I'm not asking her to quote. I'm simply asking what she learned, and not for the truth of the matter, but as to why she did what she did next. I'll overrule the objection. Um, I discovered her the, her name was tied to Vallow, and it brought up newspaper articles about a man in Arizona who had been shot in his own home by a brother-in-law. And I took that to my husband, and I said, I think this is the same woman that he's married. Uh, he did not die from a heart attack. And did you, and based on that, did you end up having a conversation with Chad at some point? Uh, we've ha had multiple conversations with Chad. Eventually, the last conversation that I've ever had with Chad was in December, um, was when we asked him to stop lying about what was going on because there was just so much information that had come to us from the police as well. And it was based on the information you'd learned from your search of the Internet and that the police had told you that led you to believe he was lying? Yes, because I had seen, you know, as I looked up Lori Vallow's name at that point, I had seen that it had listed, uh, I'd actually seen an obituary for Charles where Kay Woodcock had commented that we will take good care of J.J. And I didn't know who J.J. was. Um, there was mention of another daughter, but it didn't say her name. And I thought, there's kids involved. And I didn't know anything about who they were. So I'm just going to renew my objection. I don't know where we're getting this information from. Well, I will sustain that. It seems to be coming probably from a hearsay source at this point, Ms. Blake. After learning that information, did you ask Chad about whether or not Lori had children? Yes, I did. I asked I asked him in a phone call. I said, so please tell me about this woman that you've married to replace my sister with. And he told me that she had had a hard life and that the reason why they hadn't told me her name was because she was trying to, you know, stay away from the stigma of what had happened to her. And I said, well, so please help me understand. So now that you've married her, are, you, are there children? Because I had seen the other information. And I said, are you going to be raising kids together? You know, Mark will be coming home from his mission. And he told me, no, that there is no children and that they were going to be empty nesters. Just one moment. I don't have any additional questions at this time, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Ms. Blake. Uh, Cross-examination. The witness could be handed Defendant's Exhibit C. Ms. Is it William? Yes. Uh, you've been handed what's been marked as Exhibit C. Uh, do you recognize that document? Yes, I do. And what is it? It's my sister's obituary. Uh, do you know who wrote that? 
Um, I wrote it uh, along with some of my family members. And it, uh, who contributed to the obituary? Um, I know that Chad had given us some information, but myself and my parents had put it together. And is this exhibit a true and accurate copy of, of her obituary? Um, from what I can see, yes. Your Honor, I'd move to adm admit Exhibit C. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. Very well. Exhibit Defense C is admitted. So this uh, obituary is, uh, I'm okay if, if she uh, hangs on to it. I'll, I'll ask her a few questions about it. Uh, so the information in this obituary is that uh, Tammy Daybell passed away peacefully in her sleep. Do you see that? Yes. And, and where would you get that information? That was just from what Chad told us. Okay. And so the information uh, that wasn't from a doctor's report, it wasn't from the police, that was just from what Chad told you? Correct. Okay. We were led to believe that she was sick and had died in her sleep. All right. And then you talk about the family history here, and I think you've already mentioned that. We don't need to go through it. Um, but in her obituary talks about her interests in life, and I think you've talked about that as well. The uh, Tell me about this uh, book publishing company that uh, Chad and Tammy were involved with. Yes, they had started a company together, Spring Creek Books. And, and what did that do? Uh, they published books that Chad wrote, and they also published books from other authors. And uh, so was that Chad's full-time job? Uh, sometimes, yes, but he was mostly on the side. He also... Uh, during the, some of the time would work at the cemetery during part of this time that they had the company. Okay. And at that, at one time, did that company go bankrupt? Uh, yes, they did. They had an issue with some distribution of books with Deseret Book um, because of how bookstores work, that if they find that they aren't selling enough of them, they can actually send a whole bunch of inventory back. And since they were a small company, uh, it caused them to lose some money financially when they sent, you know, extra books back that they had already printed for them. So did your sister have to get a job other than Spring Book Company? Correct. When it went bankrupt? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry if I interrupted you. No. Um, and so the... Uh, did. Chad get another job other than Springbook Company? Um, I believe so. That that's you know when he worked for the cemetery. Okay. Do you know what year they moved to Rexburg, Idaho? Um, it would have been in. Um, oh my gosh. I don't remember the exact year. Uh, to be honest. Around 2015, or is that? Too late or too early? I think that's too early. I'm sorry, I don't. I, I don't recall the exact year that was. Did you know how many years they lived in Rexburg before Tammy died? Um, at least f three to four. Okay, so she died in 2019. So maybe they lived in Idaho three or four years. Yes. Okay. And um, so you felt like. When Chad and Tammy lived in Utah, uh, that you were close to them and saw them frequently. Correct. And when they moved to Idaho, uh, that, that it became harder to stay in touch. Correct. Did uh, Did Chad talk to you about his his near death experiences? Uh, yes, he did. Did he write books about those? Yes, he did. Uh, have you read those books? Um, only one of them. Uh, how would you describe his books? Um, very spiritual in nature. Uh, 
were they well received? Did he make money off of them? Um, he did make some money off of them, yes. I don't know the exact amount. And so uh, the when did you first hear Chad talk about his near-death experiences? I actually don't recall it, a, a time for when that happened. Was it something before his book was published? Um, I believe he probably brought it up in conversation. Okay. We hold a lot of that stuff to be, you know, personal. So um, when people talk about their spiritual experiences, I, you know, I don't write that down. And but yet, Chad was not keeping his experiences personal. He was writing books and going to conferences. And Correct. That. So he was trying to make money off of his, uh, what he'd call a spiritual experience. Uh, I, that's a complicated answer. Yeah. So, so you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't write down your spiritual experiences and try to make money off it. But that's what Chad Daybell did. That's either a yes or no question for me. I. Okay. And so these conferences that Chad Daybell would go to go to speak at, would, would you go to those? No, I did not. What were the, some of those conferences called, do you know? Um, I know some of them were called Preparing a People. And, and he would go and try to sell his books there? Yes. And he would go and talk to others about his spiritual experiences? Uh, I believe so. And you would talk to Chad and your sister about what he was doing? Uh, sometimes, but it didn't always come up in conversations. W was your sister uh, going to these conferences with him, or was he going alone? No, he went alone, mostly. Tammy didn't travel with him to those because she was working and raising children. So she had a job taking care of the kids, and Chad was out trying to sell books. Correct. And do you know where he would go to try to sell his books? Uh, you know, I didn't track him. What would Tammy or Chad tell you? That he just had conferences all over the place. He's been to Idaho, Utah, Arizona. I don't know what other states he went to. Okay. But those are the three that you remember. I do remember those. All right. And uh, did your sister uh, help publish these books? Yes, she did. And... And so that was after the Spring Book Company went bankrupt, they tried to uh, make it go again? Yeah, they still tried to write books, and they found other distributors to uh, you know, help out with distribution of their books or of other authors' books. Okay. And so did, did you ever hear uh, Chad and Tammy with you... <clears throat> Excuse me, did you ever hear Tammy say, Chad, uh, quit trying to sell books, go get a real job? Uh, no, I was never present for any of conversation like that. And, and so Tammy, uh, rather than say, go get a real job, she was supportive of his book-selling endeavors. I would think so, yes. In fact, you say she was a computer whiz. Would she help him publish these books? Uh, yes. And uh, was she in charge to, of the, the graphic design of the books? Yes. And so she was an instrumental part in getting these books from Chad's thoughts to publishing and selling. Uh, yeah. And you say you've read one of them. Well, uh one of the ones that you were referring to, but I've read some of his others, yes. Oh, okay. And how, and how would you describe the books that you've read? Uh, most of them are fictional about uh, what they feel like life could be like for uh, the second coming. It's almost like the same kind of a genre as a dystopian novel that a lot of teenagers read, but his was more geared towards... Um, religious aspects, but it was all fiction. Okay. And would he advertise his books as fiction? Uh, I would believe so, as far as uh, some of them, some of them not. It just depends on which book. He wrote several. Were you aware that 
uh, one time he said, everything that I've read is true, or everything that I've written is true. Uh, I don't know about that statement. Okay. He never said that to you? Personally, I don't recall him ever saying that. Okay. Now, these, uh, these books are uh, the content of them. Uh, the, it wasn't something that that uh, you were enamored with. Um, I'm a, an avid reader, and so I read lots of different things. I, you know, I would read some to support him, but I also teach school, and I don't have time to always read all the things that get published and put out there. Yeah. Did, your sister Tammy, uh, w w did she believe what Chad was writing was true? Um, I, I don't know. Did, did she tell you that it was fiction? It's, just, it's really just made up stuff. Well, a lot of it was b based on what he probably felt would happen in the future, but it was still a fictional story. With Okay. This, um, these, uh, I think you said you never went to any of these conferences or seminars that he would speak at? No. And Tammy, as far as you know, did not go to any as well. Well, I, I'm sure maybe she went to a couple of them, but for the most part she didn't go to all of them. Now you indicate that your sister was an empty nester at the time of her death? I never said that about my sister. Uh, oh, uh, you mentioned empty nester. Uh, that was Chad's statement to someone else? No, that was his statement to me about him and Lori okay. being an empty nester. Were, were Chad and Tammy empty nesters when Tammy died? Well, they still had a son that lived at home, and they had a son on a mission who would come home and, and live with him when he came home. They are older children, but they still had children around. And when you say mission, what are you talking about? Uh, in our Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a lot of our youth go out and serve a religious mission for two years. And Mark was on one to Africa. And the, uh, so Chad and Tammy didn't have any minor children at the time of her passing? No. Okay. So all of her children were adults? Were adults, yes. When you talked about uh, Chad being part of a cemetery crew, uh, what is a sexton? What does that mean? They oversee everything that happens at a cemetery, uh, the burials of everybody's loved ones. They make sure that the mortuaries and the vault companies, they make sure that the hole is dug and they put in the vault and they maintain the space so that it's you know, the lawn is taken care of and, you know, all the general upkeep that goes with making something stay nice. And how long did Chad do that? Um, I don't remember the exact years, but he was there for quite some time. D did he do that as a, in high school? Did he start out doing that? Yeah, he did. He started <laughs> out as a teenager that he worked there with his siblings. It was a summer job. And then as an adult later, he was still interested in that. Correct. Because it was something he knew how to do and it, you know, it paid well. Okay. Do you know if he took a job as a cemetery sexton in Idaho? No. Do you know why? Do why? I know why what? Do you know why he would not be looking for a job other than writing books? Um, I don't. Now, these visits that you had with your uh, sister that you've talked about, were those in the summer of 2019 before she died? Which visits are you referring to? Uh, June or July of 2019, a visit when your sister came and something was off with Chad. Yeah, that happened in June. They came and stayed with us. The June of 2019. Yes, they were. They had come down from Idaho to celebrate uh, Chad's mom's birthday. Um, his parents live in our same town, 
And they stayed with us for part of that visit. And then was there another visit just a month later in July? Yes, in, in July, but we didn't know they were in town. They were, uh, they had written, not written a book, but they had published a book for another author that there was a movie premiere tied to that book, but I hadn't heard about it. It was for the fighting preacher and they happened to be in town for that. Um, and they just showed up at our door to give me my birthday present. And and that was when Chad would not come in to visit with you? Correct. He sat in his car. And that was unusual? It was very unusual. Uh, and then the last time you, or the next time you saw your sister was in October of 2019? Correct. And that was also in Utah? Yes. Uh, and... Tammy looked healthy and fine. Yes, she did. Did she ever say to you, my husband has had a vision that I'm going to die? No, she never mentioned that to me at all. Would you be surprised to hear anything like that coming from your sister? Um, Yeah, I would be surprised by that. As far as you know, Tammy had a full life, a uh, healthy, happy person. Yeah. She was not <clears throat> making arrangements to die. <laughs> no. No. And uh, and so when Chad told you she was coughing and died, uh, did you suspect something off? Um, I felt um, like, and I wasn't sure why, but I did. I felt like something had happened to her, and I didn't even know why. I had no reason to suspect Chad. I had no reason to suspect anything, but I do feel as a spiritual person some myself that my sister was telling me that something had happened to her. Did your sister tell you about being shot at? Uh, yes, they told us that it, some kid was pranking with a paintball gun because that's what they were told. And so your visit with your sister Tammy was uh, after the the paintball no, shooting? No, it was before the paintball shooting that happened after. Ms. Williams, can you please make sure to wait until Mr. Archibald Oh, okay, questions. thank you. Ms. Okay, Ms. Williams. Sorry. When anyone's talking, please. I know it's difficult and stressful, but please wait until the question's completed. It just helps our court reporter to keep the record. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Sorry. No, sorry about that. So, so your visit with your sister Tammy in October of 2019, your personal visit face to face, was before the paintball incident. Correct. And so you must have talked to her on the phone then after the paintball incident. No, we didn't talk on the phone. We messaged. Okay. So the in texting or yes. All right. So after uh, Chad remarried, uh, did you meet his his new wife? No. They uh, left for Hawaii shortly after we found out, so I never, I never met her. There was also a trip to Knott's Berry Farm. Correct, that they took uh, over Thanksgiving. Okay. So the end of November of 2019, uh, Chad and Lori and all of Chad's kids went to Knott's Berry Farm. Is that right? Uh, that was part of their trip. I believe they you know, went to the beach and things, too. And so, and how would you have learned about that? Uh, Chad told us. All right. Did you see photos of that event? No, I didn't. From Chad's kids, did you hear from Chad's kids about? Uh, that? Yeah, they had told us about it. I think they actually, uh, a couple of their kids showed us pictures of them at the beach, but I didn't see anything else past that. Okay, and that was in late November of 2019. Yes. I'm sorry for the loss of your sister. Thank you. Ms. 
Ms. Blake, uh, redirect. Thank you, Your Honor. Just briefly. You were asked a lot about Tammy's employment and Chad's employment. Correct. When you talked to Chad in December of 2019, did he indicate to you how he and Lori were going to support themselves? Um, well, I know that they had the life insurance money that they'd gotten from my sister and that they were going to, I think, take some time. Um, and he was probably going to write some more books. And in the past, Chad had relied on Tammy to contribute to the finances. Correct. Chad was not able to financially support the family by himself. No. And he wasn't, he didn't indicate to you that he'd found a new profession to do that. No. So presumably he may have needed to rely on support from his new spouse. Correct. He uh, told us that she had lots of money. You were asked if you ever met Lori. Did Chad ever come around your family after he was remarried? No. In fact, he wouldn't even tell my parents he had gotten remarried. He made his daughter call my mom. And you were asked about... Um, Lori and Chad taking some of Chad's children to Knott's Berry Farm? Yes. And did you say they told you about that? Yes. And that was in late November? Yes. So just the next month was when Chad informed you there were no minor children? Correct. You were also asked about, in the obituary, how you got the information that she'd passed away peacefully in her sleep and that came from Chad. Correct. You were asked if you heard about that from a doctor. Yes. Uh, and at that time, it was just Chad relaying that information to you? Yes. At some point, did you learn different information from a doctor or medical examiner? Yes. Did Chad ever tell you about having a vision that Tammy would die before she was 50? He never said that to us at all. And Chad and Lord, or excuse me, Chad and Tammy had five children together. Correct. Are all five of those children still alive? Yes. I have no further questions. All right. Thank you, Miss Blake.